Chicago police say yet another person was abducted and robbed near Wrigley Field over the weekend. What's being done to protect residents and visitors on the north side? Also this morning, carjacking crackdown. What the Cook County Sheriff is asking drivers to do today to help catch criminals. Plus a new warning from health experts, a surge in respiratory viruses among children as we welcome you on this Thursday morning. Live from Chicago's number one news, ABC 7 Eyewitness News at 7. Start streaming now. Good morning to you. Busy Thursday morning. I'm Val Warner. And I'm Tanya Babich. And for Terrell, let's look outside right now. Really nice start to the day. Chilly, though, 34 degrees. But we're going to start to crank the heat up little bit by little bit. Greg. And, and if we didn't have those clouds, we would easily be in the 20s. Widespread in the 20s, maybe even like mid 20s. But as it is, McHenry, St. Charles, Lake Geneva, they all have clouds. Chicago has clouds. And then has held our temperatures to at the very coolest, the upper 20s. Again, could have been a lot cooler this morning with winds out of the southwest we will warm things up nicely we'll be in the upper 50s this afternoon a fantastic day a warmer day than yesterday and we keep with that southwesterly wind it'll hold us warmer tonight and put our temperature in the lower 70s for tomorrow we'll see how long we hang out in the 70s coming up over to you russ we start in northwest Indiana. We've got a crash northbound on I-65 just before 61st Avenue. It's causing about a two-mile backup there. On the Illinois side, 40, 45-minute travel times, but lots of issues on I-55 in the DuPage and Will County corridors. Chopper 7 is over I-55 right now. We've got SkyMap 7 on, so you and I, we can all get our bearings there in that stretch right around Woodward Avenue and and they are showing some very, very heavy delays uh, in both directions. The crash northbound near Route 83 causing backups, even though it's on the shoulder. And then southbound closer to 355, we had a crash also on the shoulder. But either way you look at it, you're going to be sitting in traffic. Val and Tanya. Roz, thank you. This morning we have a breaking news update. Chicago police now say there was another abduction and armed robbery near Wrigley Field that we didn't know about previously. Jessica D'Onofrio is live at Clark and Addison with the details of this. Jess, it just keeps happening. Val and Tanya, the neighborhood has been on high alert for days and now police have issued an updated crime alert. They're now confirming a fifth robbery and abduction in the Lakeview neighborhood near Wrigley Field. CPD says three of the incidents happened between midnight and 1:15 in the morning Saturday and Sunday along the 34, 35 and 3600 blocks of North Clark Street as well as the 1100 block of West Addison. The fifth incident also happened in the 1100 block of West Addison last weekend. That's why you see four locations on this map. Police say the offenders forced the victims into a gray sedan at gunpoint, robbed them of their cell phones and wallets, then kicked them out of the car. Many residents hoping police have some sort of surveillance images of the suspect vehicle since there are so many cameras in this busy area. Meanwhile, this weekend is expected to be warm, which means more people will be out and about in the neighborhood. No word yet on if police plan to increase patrols here. However, we do know that there will be more private security. Business owners say the East Lakeview Chamber of Commerce has now increased the budget for that substantially. Valentina, back to you. All right, Jessica, thank you for that report. This broke overnight, a rather unusual and even brazen robbery on Chicago's west side. Police say someone drove a minivan up to the drive through window of a McDonald's in the Austin neighborhood and broke the service window. He then took the register drawer and took off. No word of any arrests. There has been so much concern about carjackings in the Chicago area, and this morning the Cook County Sheriff's Office is going to update us on their efforts to track down stolen vehicles. Diane Patu is live at the Sheriff's Command Post in River North with more on what's happening today. Diane. Val and Tanya, it's potentially a faster way to track your car after a carjacking. With carjackings on the rise, Cook County Sheriff Tom Dart worked to create legislation requiring auto manufacturers provide officers with as many details about that vehicle's tracking capabilities if it gets stolen with the owner's permission. This morning, you can give that permission ahead of time online on a new website that will actually have car owners digitally sign a tracking consent form allowing the car's manufacturer to release that information to police officers faster when that carjacking occurs. Sheriff Dart plans to outline this new website and the potential benefit to help catch carjackers faster. Valentino, back to you. 
All right, Diane, thank you. A warning for people who buy items off of Facebook Marketplace or offer up. Robbers are targeting people who use those sites. Chicago police now say at least 20 robberies have happened between July and this month. The victims arrive in the 6700 block of South Elizabeth and the offenders robbed them at gunpoint. In each case, police say victims use social media to buy a motorbike or ATV. We talked with someone who almost became a victim and we're protecting his identity. I mean, I'm still kind of in shock. It's kind of hard to like think about just because it's all happening so quick. We came thinking, well, yeah, we're going to get a dirt biker to go have some fun and you end up getting robbed or who knows. Police say if you respond to listings for items, meet by a police station or in a safe place. Now at seven, we're getting our first look at a shooting that was caught on dash camera of an ambulance on Chicago South Side. Sound like a gun to me. It is. The shooting happened back in September near Jackson Park. You'll see two men hanging out of this dark colored vehicle here. They fire off at least five shots. The paramedics then saw a person they thought had been hit. Thankfully, that person was just on the ground after ducking from the gunfire. Nobody here was injured. Can you imagine how scary that is? Oh, terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying. Well, this morning, a surge in respiratory viruses among children is pushing hospitals nationwide to the brink. Doctors warn that this trend coincides with predictions of rising cases of COVID-19 and the flu in winter months. ABC's Justin Finch is live in Washington with what families need to know this morning. Justin. Uh, Val, Tanya, the timing here is concerning for so many doctors who began seeing this virus surge back in the summer, and that's months before it usually peaks in the winter time. High alert at the nation's hospitals. Doctors sounding the alarm about a spike in children suffering respiratory viruses and the resulting strain on resources. The next four to eight weeks uh, are going to be challenging. Connecticut Children's Medical Center now planning to team with FEMA and the National Guard on a field hospital as beds run out. How many children are waiting for beds right now? Uh, right now in the emergency department, I believe we have about 14 waiting for inpatient beds. Hospitals in at least 26 states reporting a crush of pediatric patients earlier than usual. Those patients mostly suffering respiratory illnesses like rhinovirus and enterovirus. Seven-week-old Gannon Cerevato is hospitalized with a virus called RSV. He is on a, a vent right now um, and he's sedated. So really that's the only thing that they say that they can do besides like management for pain and just to keep him comfortable. Doctors note this upsurge follows the end of COVID restrictions when many children were masking, social distancing, and unexposed to these viruses. During the pandemic, many people were not out socializing. Many people were masking. We do have a generation of children who have not seen many of these viruses. So what can families do now? Well, doctors recommend making sure children are up to date with their vaccinations and to watch for those symptoms like labor breathing, which could be a sign to get your child to a doctor. Val, Tanya, back to you. Justin Finch with ABC News. Thank you. The Food and Drug Administration is authorizing Novavax's COVID-19 vaccine for use as a first booster for adults 18 and up. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says about 50% of adults who got their primary series still have not gotten a first booster dose. The hope is offering another vaccine choice might help to increase booster rates. After the final debate in the race for governor, Republican Darren Bailey kicked off a statewide bus tour. We caught up with him during a stop in Springfield yesterday while polls show that he's trailing Governor Pritzker. Bailey says he's confident he can win. I think uh, it's going to take the simple thing that's made this country hard work, faith, and uh, just getting that message out to people. Pritzker had no public appearances yesterday, but after Tuesday night's debate, he says he's not taking anything for granted. We've got a field operation that's working all across the state. Uh, I'm going to work, you know, right up till and past uh, November 8th to make sure that we win. Bailey says that after the debate, he received a $2 million donation from businessman and Republican donor Richard Uline. Election Day is Tuesday, November 8th, but you can vote early. Find your polling place and learn more about the candidates on the ballot by checking out our voter's guide. You can find that at ABC7Chicago.com. 
The Chicago Bulls are off to a 1-0 start. They upset the Miami Heat in last night's season opener down in South Florida. Last year's scoring leader Zach Levine sat this one out with a sore knee. Didn't matter though, DeMar DeRozan caught fire. Pouring in 37 points to help the Bulls pull out a 116 to 108 victory. Nothing like starting off your season with a win on the road Away. with the team who was in the conference finals last year. So that will definitely be a confidence booster for the Bulls. So uh, good for them. Your live and local news is just getting started as we stream out loud this morning. Coming up, the local 10 year old girl who was inspired by her little brother to write a book about kindness and inclusion. She is making Chicago proud. It's such a wonderful story. But first, Greg has your AccuWeather forecast. Another cold start before a warm up. Plus, our I-team investigates a legal loophole that's costing minority communities millions. Some clouds out there early this morning as we take a live look out upon Woodstock and temperatures are being held in check because of those clouds better than they could be 33 degrees could easily be 27 28 degrees at O'Hare and 25 26 degrees out in Woodstock instead 29 degrees because of those clouds in Woodstock 28 degrees out in Aurora. Here are those clouds on the satellite and radar a little bit of rain shower activity out over Lake Michigan. Those are not going to dip into our viewing area, uh, but you can see those passing clouds. The good news is is there have no backup. Instead, our winds will turn to the southwest. We'll get drier and warmer air in and this air that is entrenched the really cool there even into the deep south Montgomery, Alabama, colder than we are this morning. Jack's uh, Tallahassee rather as cold as Chicago is for us this morning. It is absolutely insane how cold it is off to the south. But for us again, we get that change to the southwest that will help us warm up today. Our temperatures will be in the 50s. Temperatures warm up continuing into the weekend will be in the mid 70s on Saturday. Uh, Roz, we could even see some lower 80s south of Interstate 80 for Saturday afternoon, and it's not fleeting. It hangs around until Monday. Wow, that sounds pretty good. Well, we don't have travel times that high, fortunately, but we do have our share of problems like this in northwest Indiana, northbound on I-65, just before 61st Avenue. This crash is causing this delay, so we're looking at about a mile and a half of pretty solid traffic at that location. On the Illinois side, the travel times are anywhere from 40 to 55 minutes, so it is getting busy out there. And we also have a crash northbound on the Tri-State around Roberts Road. It's on the left shoulder, so we're, we're starting to see a little bit of a delay. Chopper 7 is over it. We've got state police, two vehicles involved. There is some heavy front end damage. So even with the help truck there, there's no lane blockage, but everybody's staring and all the flashing lights. So it is pretty solid as we get the bigger picture. That's northbound 294 just before the 83rd Street cash box. Val and Tanya. Thank you, Roz. The I-Team is finding millions of dollars are being drained out of minority communities, and it's all because of a current law in the books. That is according to Cook County Treasurer Maria Pappas. She shared her latest study with consumer investigator Jason Knowles. A new study shows that investors gamed the system. The treasurer and her team say a legal loophole drained $280 million from schools, parks, police, and other government agencies. 
The hardest hit areas are in the south suburbs. This is so egregious and it jumps off the page in such a loud manner. It's like cymbals clanging over a trumpet playing in a band. It's that bad. Cook County Treasurer Maria Pappas and her team want to stop investors from taking advantage of an Illinois law that she says is draining tens of millions of dollars every year away from minority communities. Here's how it works. If a property owner is delinquent on their property taxes, investors can buy those taxes so the county gets paid. The property owner pays back the investor plus interest. But if the owner doesn't pay back, the investor ends up getting the property. According to the treasurer's study, about 1,600 times a year, investors use a loophole in the law known as sale and error, which allows them to get out of buying those homes, many of them vacant and unwanted. The investor then gets a full refund on those taxes, plus up to 36% interest back. That's quite a deal for them. It's a great deal for them. I mean, this is one of the best investments that you could make, which is why hedge funds are so closely looking at Cook County and its tax sale. And that money, which goes back into the pockets of investors, the treasurer says is oftentimes taken away from communities in need. The interest money gets siphoned away from the governments and it's money that's used for police, fire protection, schools. All gone. All gone. Here's an example in the study. An investor paid the delinquent property taxes on this vacant Harvey home. In this case, the assessor's website incorrectly stated the home did not have an attic. The investor used that mistake to challenge the tax purchase and earned more than $17,000 in interest. That money eventually comes from the property owners in Harvey. They have to pay that money back and it sends Harvey's finances into disarray. According to the treasurer's study, in the last seven years, Harvey has lost $14 million in all because of the sale and error loophole. Chicago, $85 million. And the hardest hit municipality after Chicago is Calumet City with $16 million. The total amount these investors drained from Chicago and Cook County's south suburbs, nearly $280 million. The treasurer's office work on this has exposed a real fatal flaw in a policy in Illinois that doesn't exist in other states. Over time, you know, that will increase the property tax bills for folks to make up for this difference because now your, your local municipality, your school district has got to make up that differential somehow. The study also found that other county agencies, including the treasurer's office, made mistakes allowing investors to take advantage of the sale and error law. State Representative Cam Buckner told the I-Team that House Democrats are reviewing the study and considering legislative solutions. Jason Knowles, ABC7 Eyewitness News. When we return, are you applying for student loan forgiveness? The new warning about scammers who are already targeting borrowers looking for relief. And still to stream how the COVID-19 pandemic is leading to more free time for many Americans. Eyewitness News streaming at 7 continues after a break.
A community center coming to the southeast side aims to build a better Chicago. Ground is broken Wednesday for the United Workers Center. It'll be housed in a formerly vacant building at 98th and Ewing. The center will work to transform the local economy by empowering low-income workers. Those workers and their families will have access to a legal clinic and citizenship and ESL classes. With the application process open for student loan forgiveness, watch out for scams. The FTC says scammers are already active trying to get money and personal information from borrowers. You are urged to hang up on calls claiming you need to take immediate action to avoid losing your debt relief benefits. You never have to pay for any federal help for the student loan program. A taxpayers group in Wisconsin is asking the Supreme Court to block President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan until a lower court appeal is heard. The Biden administration is facing several legal challenges over the program, but this is the first to reach the Supreme Court. It appears many Americans have more free time after the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. That's due to more people working from home and spending less time in traffic. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York says not leaving the house to clock in frees up 60 million hours per day that workers don't spend behind the wheel driving to and from work. Hmm. According to the American Time Use Survey, most Americans are using that extra time toward personal errands, toward sleep, and toward hanging out with family and friends. In a separate study done earlier this year, nearly 80% of those surveyed said remote work is boosting their overall well-being. And it's boosting their budget, too, because they're spending less money on gas. Yes. So that's always a good thing, too. Uh, and some animals at the Brookfield Zoo are getting into Halloween, into the Halloween spirit with some special treats. Look at these cuties. The tortoises, goats, sloths, lions, they all enjoyed some pumpkins this week. The Boo at the Zoo Halloween celebration wraps up this weekend. They need to give them more snacks year round because every time when I used to take my kids to the zoo when they were little, all the animals are always lethargic and sleepy. Hmm. So you guys have kids in that little young age. When you go to the zoo, do you find that they're like active or are they always kind of just laying around? The animals are my children. The animals. We know your kids are moving around. I'm pretty lethargic. <laughs> It's honestly a, kind of a, like a crapshoot. Like, yeah. yeah, it's one or the other. Either they're out or you're like, oh, I think I see an antler. They're generally hiding from yeah. the children. They're yeah. like, oh, I've had enough of this. Well, they won't be hiding if they <laughs> pull out too. the snacks. <laughs> Me too, Mr. Zebra. <laughs> right now, we are going to join our Good Morning America viewers. I'll have a news update on TV in just a little bit. You'll see it here as well. And then when we come back, the local 10-year-old girl who was inspired by her little brother to write a book about kindness and inclusion. She's making Chicago proud. Now, an update from ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Good morning. It's 723. I'm Tanya Babich. Chicago police are now confirming a fifth abduction and armed robbery last weekend near Wrigley Field. Police say in each case, the offenders forced the victims into a gray sedan at gunpoint, robbed them of their phones and wallets, and then kicked them out of the car. So far, police have not released any possible images of the suspect vehicle. Business owners say the East Lakeview Chamber of Commerce has now increased the budget for private security from $50,000 to $300,000. Let's get a check of the forecast now with Greg. Good morning and taking a look at that forecast. Temperatures in the upper 50s for us today, lower 70s tomorrow. So we are really turning it around. Even today, uh, we're up about a dozen degrees from where we were yesterday. We keep on tacking on those degrees up a dozen degrees for our Friday, up even more for Saturday. Could even see some upper 70s or lower 80s south of Interstate 80 on Saturday. I know late October and we could grab a uh, sneak out an extra 80 degree high temperature. 74 by Sunday as things start to get a bit more cloudy a cold front swings through doesn't really affect us on Monday except we're bringing showers and storms before we turn it around on Tuesday Wednesday we've got your traffic with Ross next now's the time for a healthy start so let's move let's rest and recharge and put our health first let's be well to do that let's eat well breathe deep Find joy in the little moments and do what we love with who we love. Together, let's live well. Advocate Aurora Health.
Welcome back, everybody. We're looking at travel times, 40 to 55 minutes. 55 minutes on the Kennedy because now we've got a three-car crash mixed in right at Addison. We've got IDOT crews heading over there. Look at these delays on DLSD, particularly northbound, right around Jackson, Monroe. They've got that median construction going on till the end of the week. But then after they finish that, uh, next week, Monday through Friday, they start resurfacing just south of there from Balboa to Roosevelt. Well, they'll have lane blockage every day of the week from about 9 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon. Welcome back, everybody. On this Thursday morning, 34 degrees outside. We're going to warm it up quite a bit. I can't wait for the sun to peek through those clouds, though, yeah. because the sun makes all the difference in the world. Of Even on cooler it temperatures. Of it does. It, well, Except for when it's like negative 30 degrees outside and super sunny. And then you're just like, well, this is an odd juxtaposition. And now this, a suburban 10 year old is making Chicago proud by writing a book. That's right. Her literary creativity has been fueled by the love for her little brother. Melina uh, Lindbergh loves or lives in Lombard rather. She noticed that some people struggle to connect with her little brother, Max, who was diagnosed with cerebral palsy and has special needs. Her book is titled Hi Max, and it carries a theme of unity. It's an attempt to spread awareness about what a disability actually looks like. When we first found out, I was really sad. And then I thought this could be an opportunity for everyone to learn. I wanted to write a book to encourage everyone to just stay kind and include everyone. Melena's book becomes available on November 1st. She has such a wonderful message, and what a beautiful way to convey it out to the world. Yeah, and I think like her little brother Max was right there looking at her, like very proud of her as well, so good for her. Well, coming up this morning, tempt your taste buds at the United Center. Some of the new offerings for the upcoming Bulls and Blackhawks season. Health experts with another reason to make sure you get a good night's sleep. Watching ABC 7 Eyewitness News at 7, streaming live now. Let's take a quick look at some of the stories we'll be watching for you today. This morning, the Cook County Sheriff's Department is expected to make an announcement on additional efforts to fight carjackings. This after an armed robbery spree was cut short by Chicago's Police Carjacking Task Force. The incident happened Tuesday night after a CPD helicopter tracked two men in a car across the city. Formal charges are still pending. The Chicago Police Department is hosting another round of in-person police officer entry exams. The exams are being held today through Saturday at all city colleges of Chicago locations. These are for people between the ages of 21 and 39 who want to begin the process of becoming a CPD officer. If you're interested, you can register online through the CPD website or on the same day at any of the locations. Today, the CTA is going to outline details for its proposed 2023 budget. Budget. Fortunately for riders, there's no fare increase. The CTA says it'll keep fares where they are while maintaining a commitment to improve service. That commitment includes an effort to hire more staff. 
Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. I'm Tanya Babich. And I'm Val Warner. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're in here for Terrell. You've been here all week. Feels like you're here. <laughs> and I'm Val Warner. Uh, Greg is in for Tracy this morning, and he's going to tell us what we're in store for for the rest of the day. Yeah, good morning. And it is a cool start, but could be cooler. Those clouds we saw on that live shot, they've kept our temperatures from sagging too far into the 20s, although we are there. In some cases, 28 degrees right now in St. Charles, 29 degrees up in McHenry. I've seen some 26s and 27s pop on the board, but we're getting past our nighttime lows and on our way to the upper 40s by about lunchtime and upper 50s is daytime highs. A fantastic day with a ton of sunshine during the daylight hours, but we're getting to that time of year. Well, that sun's setting pretty early, 6.01, just a shade after 6 o'clock this evening is when our sun sets. Good news is tonight will not be nearly as chilly, and tomorrow will be in the 70s. We'll see how many days we can string together in the 70s coming up, Ross. I want to start with our biggest delay, which is actually in northwest Indiana. We've been talking about this crash northbound 65 just before 61st Avenue. Now the delays go back to 93rd Avenue. That is several miles, four miles of solid traffic on the Illinois side. Well, there's the picture so you can see what, exactly what we're talking about. But on the Illinois side, our heaviest delay is going to be on the Kennedy. We've got travel times ranging anywhere from 50 minutes to an hour five. The hour five is on the Kennedy because mixed in, we have that multi-vehicle crash at Addison. We also are getting word of a crash just happened on the outbound side of the Dan Ryan in the locals near Garfield. We do have IDOT headed in that direction. I suspect they'll block a lane once they get there. Val and Tanya. Yeah. All right, Roz, thanks. Now to today's talker. We're talking, of course, about actor, mm -hmm. actor Matthew Perry, who says he's now sober, but drug addiction nearly killed him four years ago. He's opening up about that. Now the Friends star reveals in his upcoming memoir that at one point while filming the sitcom, he was taking 55 Vicodin a day. Perry also says he was hospitalized after his colon burst from opioid abuse and was in a coma for two weeks. Doctors gave him just a 2% chance of survival. So really, it's a, it's a miracle that he's alive. Uh, and we congratulate him on his sobriety and the ability to tell this story at this stage of his life, something that could not have been easy to do. Right, to be that close to death and to survive and be able to tell it is truly remarkable. And we wish him all the best in his uh, road to, you know, on his uh, stretch of Continued sobriety, yes. Of mm -hmm. yep. All righty. Switching gears now to something else we're talking about this morning. Did you hit the snooze <laughs> button on your alarm this morning? A recent poll found we are most likely to do it on a Wednesday. That's why they call mm -hmm. it hump day, right? Hard to get over the hump. A new study says might not be as bad for you as some people think. Oh, really? Well, the general thought is you're better off setting your alarm for nine minutes later and not hitting snooze at all. That way your sleep doesn't get interrupted. But researchers at Notre Dame found it might not make a huge difference either way. So if that's how you like to wake up, the alarm goes off once, you hit snooze, the alarm goes off again. Don't worry, you're not alone. 57% of the people in the study were habitual snoozers. Uh, so researchers found using an alarm at all isn't great. Ideally, you should be going to bed earlier so your body, oh, isn't this lovely, it wakes <laughs> up naturally. Who wrote this study? Bright yeah. eyed and bushy happen? tailed. They found people who do use an alarm tend to be more sleep deprived in general. I oh, mean, so this must be for folks who are retired or wealthy and don't have to work. Or who don't have children. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we obviously all have to set alarms to get up in the middle of the night for work. Oh, There's really course. no getting around that for us or for any. My other husband shift doesn't. Oh, just Frick. because you wake you don't you? No, wake no, up. no. He has this internal alarm. Oh, he, really? That he just can, he tells himself I need to wake up at three o'clock. He will. I've never he seen does? anything like it. I, wow. Well, here's a question for you. I can't do that. On your days off, do you naturally get up at the hour when you would? normally wake up during the week. No, no, I do. I do. I have a wake up at 3 a.m. Oh, oh on the I, have, I have one wake up. I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I, you naturally I go, wake up. Well, I, I mean, back. I also have the bladder of somebody who has birthed oh. three children. So I go, I use the bathroom and then I go back to bed. Wow. That's I, I'm at the stage of life, too, where uh, again, even like you said, Tani, if the alarm clock doesn't go off, then my kid scares the bejesus out of me like like taps me on the shoulder and she's just there. It's oh like, my God, it's so movie. Freaky when they do that. I think cat that does that. Oh, right. <laughs> See, the One cat, thing. the cat may actually be a threat though. You, you never know. Yeah. She just wants to eat. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I, uh, I am a snoozer. I do hit the snooze and I also said, see, opposite of this story for me, I like that it interrupts my sleep. I like that it gives me a warning that I only have X amount of minutes left before it's time to get up. In fact, I've gone so far as to sometimes set two alarms, one at 
you know, a half an hour or an hour before to let me know that I got one more hour to lay here. I like okay. that. Girl, watch this. Really? Okay, hold on a second. How many alarms do I have set in the morning? A gazillion? Oh, I got, I'm with you. All of them. So I do them at intervals I because I don't give myself very much wiggle room because it's so early when right. we wake up. Every minute of sleep yeah. counts. And so I have an alarm that goes off that tells me, okay, Tanya, you should be done washing your face and brushing your teeth at this point. Okay, Tanya, you should be getting onto Lakeshore Drive, right? You know, DeSalvo Lakeshore Drive right really? now. Really? And you can okay, remember Tanya. all those? Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I've been doing this for 12, 13 years. Mm. I have, I've, I've got the one, I don't hit snooze. Uh, yeah, just one time up, up and ready to go, but I have one that's always set for it's, it's like my catch wire. Like if you do not leave at this just time, you will not make it to work. Yeah. For one me. of my alarms oh. does that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't set, I don't do snooze. Yeah. Because oh. I'm afraid if I do, I'll fall There's back no asleep and I won't up. wake up. I'm so afraid that I'll yeah. unconsciously yeah. Hit, like turn yeah. it off. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Raj, you can wake up on the first alarm and just yeah. get All right up. I do yeah. too. Although a lot of times I'll wake up on that first alarm and I'll go, what day is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. So here's, a, here's a survey. Here's a survey. How many of you wake up and the first thing you think about, the first thing that goes through your mind is how long before I can go back to sleep? Oh, all the time. I'm my way into work. I'm like, huh, get my nap at one o'clock this afternoon. Yep. Yeah. yeah I'm ahead it. of you. I keep thinking, <laughs> how long until Friday? <laughs> until <we're laughs> no, I do. I do. I treasure naps and I treasure bedtime. I love it. The only thing, though, for me on this shift, and maybe it's because I'm like still in that newlywed phase, with this shift, I can't, I don't go to bed at the same time with my husband. So I miss like that connection yeah. and the yeah. snuggle cuddle time. Although the other morning he woke up at 2.48 with me, so it was nice to have somebody up in the morning. I love when Paul does that. That's yeah, cool. I was like, oh, you're up. I was talking and yeah. Anyway, uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We've got a little bit of cloud cover. First of all, beautiful shot. Let's ignore the clouds. Beautiful peak colors here in Woodstock. I was just looking at a live view from up around Lake Geneva. Same type of deal. Uh, the wind has blown quite a few leaves off the trees. Those stronger winds from the last few days. You can see the tops of the trees getting a little bare, but those colors. Awesome. Nice clear skies for this afternoon. Yes, we have the cloud cover now, but those will go away. The clouds have been beneficial for us. Woodstock's at 31. You didn't have cloud cover. You could easily be in the mid 20s, 26, 27 degrees uh, this morning. Instead, we do have the clouds 35 in midway, got down to 33 in the loop, probably dealing with some frost for some this morning. Here are those clouds kind of filtering on through again. Very short lived. We'll be on to sunshine soon enough and temperatures. Thank goodness the coldest ones have actually moved off to our south. Look at Lexington colder than we are right now. Tallahassee as cold as Chicago is in Florida. So thankfully, uh, again, this is all moving away from us. Not so great for them, but we do have a southwesterly wind today. That'll provide our big warm up today and beyond. Temperatures on the way to near 60, then 70 tomorrow and mid 70s on Saturday and Sunday, Ross.
Yeah, we've got these big delays continuing in northwest Indiana. Northbound 65, about four miles approaching 61st Avenue because of this crash. That's what the delay looks like. On the Illinois side, though, we've got travel times anywhere from 50 minutes to an hour 15. That would be on the Kennedy. We've had a couple of minor crashes, but Chopper 7 just came across this crash in the Elk Grove area. It's on southbound Route 53 or slash 290, just south of Beasterfield. Take a look at the Chopper shot. They're over this crash that via vehicle lost an axle? It's really bizarre. It's like blocking a, the two center lanes. State police are with it. So it is just now starting to cause a rather heavy delay because people have to go around it using the shoulders. So yeah, it's kind of an unusual situation, but uh, typical backup when you've got lane blockage like that. Val and Tanya. Yeah, it is, Ross. Thank you. Now to a local push to help pause Chicago with a national costume contest. It's called the Bar Dogs howl Owen costume contest and the winner gets a pretty big donation. Susanna, Susanna Wickham with Paws Chicago is here with us now. And of course, you've got an adorable little friend with you to talk about how we can help the animal shelter win $1,000. Good morning, Susanna. Good morning. Gus is ready for me to hit the snooze button and go back to sleep. Okay, I, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. We need more snoozing. <laughs> Gus is already snoozing. Oh, first of all, okay, I want to talk all about this, but tell us a little bit about who you have with you. Who's our extra guest this morning? So Gus is my baby that I adopted from Paws almost 10 years ago. He was actually born at Paws. That happens sometimes. And he's just the best, best friend, best partner in the world. And he's wearing his Halloween hoodie. Um, <gasps> you know, ready to ready to go out in the cold and trick or treat. Oh my God, he's so... also go back to sleep. Exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, first of all, Gus is sleepy. He's so adorable, so well behaved. And I didn't even know there were doggy goodies. I must get Kobe that. So let's get to it. Tell us, Susanna, how can viewers vote for Paws Chicago to win the bar dog wine uh, costume contest? So there are 10 shelters participating all around the country. We're the only one in Chicago. Go to the bar dog wine Instagram page. Every shelter participating gets a $250 donation, but the winning shelter, we hope that's us, gets $1,000. And not only is it about the donation, but it's about the awareness of the desirability of shelter pets because they're, they're wonderful animals and we want people to know, come to the shelter, come to pause and meet your new best friend. Oh, look at those little, look at all these cute costumes and adorable costumes. So tell me a little bit more about how viewers can get involved with Paws Chicago in general. Well, we're always looking for volunteers. We need people to come and walk dogs and cuddle cats and spend time with our animals because when they're in a shelter environment, they're under stress when they're waiting for a home, they're meeting lots of people. So we love to have volunteers come and just help us with the caretaking of the animals. Uh, we're always looking for fosters. So if you don't wanna come in to pause, you can open up your home to a homeless pet for a few days or a few weeks as they acclimate to living in a home and we prepare them for adoption. We always accept donations of items that we need for our animals. We operate a pet food pantry. Of course, we take monetary donations and we want people to come in and adopt from us as, as much as possible, spread the word. I was just gonna say, if you volunteer there, it's easy to fall in love and wanna take that love right on home with you, that's for sure. And you have a big event coming, an adoption event coming up this weekend called Angels with Tails. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, that's our signature event that we've been doing for 25 years. And it started on, you know, the shopping district, Michigan Avenue, Oak Street. And now we spread it through various communities. So this Sunday, it's Roscoe Village, up and down Roscoe Avenue. We've partnered with 24 businesses, five other shelters. There are going to be 40 animals avail available for adoption. And it's all about meeting people where they are to spread awareness about what's going on with homeless pets and what people can do to help. Oh, well, I wish you all the best. Our viewers, I'm sure, are watching, pay attention and taking notes and willing to do their part as well. Susanna Wickham with Paws Chicago. Thanks so much for waking up with us. And Great thank you, you, Gus. You're so <laughs> sweet and cute. Go back to bed now. <laughs> yes, both of you. Do it for me, too. All right. We are going to make sure to have this information on our website on how you can get involved and vote. Here's the information one more time, though. This will be on our website, abc7chicago.com. So cute. So, so cute.
Nearly 70% of Americans say they plan to celebrate Halloween this year. That's according to the National Retail Federation. And the holiday is 11 days away, so you're running out of time if you're looking for a costume. Here's a look at what folks are planning for this year. Among kids, you got Spider-Man, princesses, or witches. Those are the top costumes. For adults, you have witches, vampires, and ghosts. They top the list. This, this feels pretty standard. Yeah, it does. And for your four-legged friends, pumpkins, hot dogs, and bats are the top costumes. I really like that hoodie that Gus had on. I've never seen a doggy hoodie. Have you seen the video of, it's a dark colored dog, black dog, dark uh. colored dog, and he's got these spider legs and he's scurrying around. It looks like no. a giant spider. It is hysterical. Oh, we gotta find that. And I need to find that costume for Hugo. Oh goodness, we gotta find, if you know it, let us know. Uh, time now to feature one of our spooky scenes. Jeff Hall sent us this video of his home in Burns Harbor, Indiana. Jeff says, the three of them have been decorating for the past 20 years. I'm assuming three of his family members. He says Halloween and Christmas are his favorite holidays. To send us your pictures or video, click on the icon under promotions on our webpage, abc7chicago.com. You can drag and drop your images or video right there. Please tell us who we should give credit to for the video or images. We need to put that on the air and then watch as we count down to Halloween. We are back in 90 seconds. Welcome back, everybody. We have this breaking news just in. British Prime Minister Liz Truss has announced her resignation. Now, remember, Truss became Prime Minister on September 6th, only about five or six weeks ago. Here she is meeting Queen Elizabeth before Queen Elizabeth passed away. Truss's resignation follows weeks of political and economic crisis after the budget, after the government introduced a new mini budget, which was widely criticized. Uh, so some really big you know, seismic movements happening in British politics right now, in British government, and I'm sure we will have much more on this uh, on our news programs here at ABC7 and also on Good Morning America. Yeah. Back now to the news here at home. The United Center is showing off some new food and beverage options that you have at the Bulls and the Blackhawks games this season. There's a variety of sandwiches, chips, and drinks. They're also the recently opened two-story FanDuel Sportsbook Lounge. And it's been very, very well received. People are loving uh, the comfort. They love the big video walls. Uh, they love our menu. And um, so far, so good. So we're very excited to show it to Bulls and Blackhawks fans this weekend as the season opens. When you're in your seat watching a game, you'll notice state-of-the-art updates to the scoreboard and ribbon boards. Looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the food. I know. That's always the best part. Well, when we return, do you feel like mosquitoes are attracted to you more than to others? Well, it's not in your head. Researchers have found there's a reason for that. Eyewitness News streaming at 7 continues after a break.
Are you a mosquito magnet? Yep. A new study finds some people really are, and it probably has to do with the way that we smell. I knew it. Researchers found people who are most attractive to mosquitoes produce a lot of certain acids on their skin. They are part of the skin's natural moisturizing layer, and people produce them in different amounts. The study was done at Rockefeller University in New York. So funny, because I actually just got an alert about this. It did the 23andMe test. No, I haven't. And I, I did, and they sent me an email being, are you more attractive to mosquitoes? Click here. Well, obviously, I clicked here, logged into my account, and it turns out I am apparently biologically more likely huh. to be attractive to something? mosquitoes. I mean, I want to be more attractive, you know, than, than, than I don't know, than what, but like, <laughs> not to mosquitoes. <laughs> right. Um, to cute little puppies you can cuddle with. Sure. I don't know. If you want to keep your heart in good shape, make sure you get enough rest. A new study published in the Journal of American, the American Heart Association shows the more sleep a person gets, the better their heart health. The findings are based on sleep data from 2,000 people. Researchers say people who sleep less than seven hours a night have an increased risk of heart disease related issues, including type 2 diabetes, obesity and high blood pressure. I aim for seven. May not get it, but I average six and a half. I definitely don't get it. Don't get it. Not even close to six and a half. Oh no. What's your average? I, it's all. It's it's all over. on a weeknight. Five. Oh yeah. Well, it looks like I'll be here for forever because I am going to get my one of us here. will. Ninety. I'm going to be ninety-seven years old coming on here. God and, bless uh, you. Yeah, and this is what I'm going to say. Happy for it. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I win. What does that say? Thank you for watching. Where are the glasses? Where this the glasses? is my projected 97-year-old anchor voice. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> I'm Tanya Babich. I'll have news updates for you with Greg Dutra and Roz Varon during Good Morning America. We're going to hear from all of us here in just a moment. Val, great to hang out with you. Let's do it again tomorrow. We'll do it. <laughs> this has been Eyewitness News, streaming at 7.